Well, hello everyone, it's Rick Pasek, the Flyfish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today we will be tying a uh, really big tropical gurgler pattern. Uh, it's something that I've been playing with. Um, I've noticed that uh, a lot of the people down here in Mexico and stuff, the, the fishermen, they really like using top water poppers, um, like big, like six, eight inch long poppers. So this is kind of my uh, fly version of that, if you want to call it. But uh, it's, it's basically, it's just a, it's a gurgler just tied in the, uh, in the uh, tropical colors. So hope you guys enjoy this one. Let's get tying. So in the vise today, we have a A-Rex HR418 bomber hook in a size one. That's in the way. Okay. For the thread, going to be using some Semperfly Nano Silk in white. Um, for the tail on this, I will be using a blend of the, uh, well, let's see what they actually call it, rose pink and hot pink. Um, craft fur from Semperfly, brand new, just came out in uh, January, late January of 24. Uh, um, and for the... Um, uh, floater, the back, the shell. I'm going to be using some Semperfly um, foam. It's uh, the dual foam. I'm um, not sure. I think this is done in pink. I think it's what it's called. Um, and then I will be using some, for the flash in the tail, a little bit of hen's angel hair. Um, and then for the body, I'm going to be using some Semperfly eye stubbing in pink. And then I might or might not, depending, uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, um, throw in the city legs. So I probably will. <clears throat> this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. Um, it is a fairly in-depth tie, but uh, let's stop talking and get her going. So just get this all... Get it on. I want to go about the point of the hook no further. I don't want to go around that bend. So if anything, err on the side of caution and don't go around that bend. You don't want this tail to be sticking down. You want it to be going out straight. So build up just a tad bit of a bulge right here with the thread. Again, and just another attempt to hold this this fur out, right? So I'm going to start off with the rose pink. I got my dubbing brush here. And then just what I just do is I just, on my table here, all I'm doing is just, just flattening these fibers, just making sure they're flat, just so it's easier for me to see where I want to cut material out of, right? That's all. So I'm just cutting a nice little chunk out here. Don't need an absolute ton of material. Um, it's about good. So I just want to figure out my, my length. So about like that. So right where my fingers are, I'm going to take it and cut that off. Just put my material out of the way. So just cut that straight and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab it a little bit further down and I grab that dubbing brush again and I'm just on the table here just brushing out the little bit of under further is this stuff has very little so so now I'm just going to come back up to the front here to about there and that's where I'm going to catch it in all the way back to that bulge that we created with the thread. And just see how that's, that's holding that tail up a bit, right? So, first layer, done ski. Now what I like doing is I'll take some of that angel hair and I'm just gonna pull some out of the package, not a lot, and I'm gonna fold it over Uh, 
I'll lay that in there. And just tie that in. Stuff is so thin it doesn't actually build up any bulk anyway. So now I'm just going to go in the back here. Just give it a bit of a pull and just kind of cut it as I go away. It'll only straight once you're down. Okay, now repeat that process with the hot pink. Just going to, again, take my brush and just brush it straight so I can see the fibers that I want. Take a little pinch full from the where I brushed it. That'll be enough. That'll be enough. That'll be enough. So now I'm just going to again lay this, and I want this slightly longer than the light pink. So about there. That'll be perfect as it is. So I'm just gonna, again, just brush out a little bit of under fur. Yeah, wherever uh, Semperfly was able to get this uh, craft fur, they did a really good job um, sourcing it out because it has so little under fur. I've never seen a craft fur that has so little which is really nice, because it can be a pain in the butt. So now, repeat one last little bit of angel hair. Again, back up to the front, just tie that in, right on top, go back and just cut it to length that you want it. There we go, so there's my tail completed. Now you can make this longer, shorter. It all depends on, on the species you're going after. Um, I'm going to be trying to use this for uh, kind of like a top water gurgler popper down here in Mexico. Um, so I want these, I want it just a little bit longer. So, so now <clears throat> I'm going to take some of that uh, ice dub. Just a little chunk of the ice dub. Gonna wax my thread. I'm gonna dub this on. And I want it not loose, but I don't want a super tight dub here because I do want to pull this out. So, so I'm just gonna go right around the back here. It's going to look like a lot, but it's not for what I want. Because I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to really tug this out now. Oh. I want to get it almost down to nothing on the thread, on the uh, hook. I want it all kind of hanging back. So I'm being pretty aggressive here. Let's see if the, where did it go, where did it go, where did it go with the barbecue brush? See if that will pull it out a better, bit better. Basically, it's just a, a cover point for my, a tie-in point, right? For my tie-in point of my tail. So now I'm going to take the foam. And I'm going to cut about a, maybe a bit more than a quarter inch wide. Maybe three eighths of an inch wide strip out of here. Okay. So there's my, my piece. Okay. 
We're going to cut a bit of a tie-in uh, point here. Okay. And where the where this point ends right here, that's where I'm, I want at the at the uh, um, over top of this pink. So. So now I'm just going to couple of loose, three, four loose wraps, and then I'll pull it down. You got to be careful with any of these foam products. Uh, it doesn't matter what brand they are. You got to be careful with Nano Silk GSPs. Um, they will, they're sharp, right? They'll, they'll cut them. So you just got to be careful. That'll work nice. So, okay. Just making sure everything's tied in. I'm back. Silly leg time. It's another product that Semperfly came out with a while ago, and they've added to their uh, added colors to their repertoire uh, in January here. But they came out with these about a year ago. I love them. They got some of the craziest color combinations with spec and stuff that I haven't seen in other brands, but um, this is just straight pink, right? So, so I'm just going to, don't want to put too much on here. So I'm just, just going to lay this in on the side here and just tie that in. I don't want them too, too crazy long. Tie that in, grab both of them and make sure they stay along the side. And then I'll just, Cut them the same length. Like I said, just make sure it's tied in well and back. And I'll take a little bit of ice dub. Wax my thread. that out of your way so you don't dub in your uh, silly leg. You don't want to do that. Okay, I'm just going to take those silly legs and keep them out of them. Actually, I know what I'll do. I got a little, a little clippy clip here and I'll just put the hair and everything. Love these little uh, hair clips. They're uh, <laughs> super cheap and they work great. Especially when you're doing big flies, lots of big material. This one leg just does not want to cooperate. There we go. So now another set of leggies. Put it. There we go. The legs do not have to be perfect lengthwise. If they're just slightly different, that's fine. It's not going to make a huge difference. Come on, get in there. There you go. So, another bit of ice dub. And the legs are more for just for movement. They're, they don't really represent anything in these patterns. And some patterns they do, and this one they don't. It's just more, just more movement. The more movement and the more of a silhouette you can get with this type of fly, the better. So right over top of those. Oh, 
don't know why I cut that because it's all going to get pulled down anyway, but whatever. <sighs> Just get one more silly leg out here. Back. Oh. Wax my thread. Cut my silly leg to length. Try to get this all under one package here if I can. Especially that first set, like the last set I tied in, just so I don't get it caught up in my Dubbing. Back over top, right over top of that, and then leave yourself some room in the front for the foam. Okay. So now that's all out of the way. I'm going to take my barbecue brush, see if that'll work without killing things. I just want to make sure all this stuff out of the top is out of the way. The rest I can get after. I'm going to use my Velcro. Okay. Then I'm just going to, I want to bend that back and then I want to pick a about where I want to tie it in there. About there. Two, three, and then I tighten up. Then I'll lift forward and I'll come in front of it a little bit. Tighten up on top again. Then I'm going to take a little bit more of that ice dub. Just a little noodle. And I'm going to lift this and go in underneath here, right tight up against that uh, foam. Right tight. It's just going to help hold that foam up because you want that up to, to help with the gurgle, right? Because that's what this is. It's a gurgler. So now I'm just going to get in there and just give it a Bit of a whip finish. I'll do two to three sets of whip finishes in here. And I'm making sure, I don't know if you can see that, I'm making sure I'm pushing that back into the dubbing. And you can really crank on that because it is nano silk, right? Cut that back, make sure that's nice up. And then I want about half an inch or so. And then I'll cut off my two corners. Just kind of round that a bit. Okay, and then I will take my dubbing brush again, and now it's time to go a little crazy. And there. is the finished product. So now, uh, legs aren't too bad. That's not too bad. The back legs are a little longer. I could nip them a bit, but that is that is the finished fly. Now I could have made this a little smaller. Could have made, I could have had the, the hump down a bit, but this will really gurgle really well. So, um, and I could have probably even built up more dubbing inside of here if I wanted and pulled that out. But this is good. And I'll put a little bit of uh, 
head cement right into here. And I'll turn it over and I'll put a couple of drops of head cement into there. And that is your gurgler right there. Done. It's going to make lots of noise, lots move lots of water. So um, you can uh, put a little bit of uh, um, um, floatant on the tail and a little bit of floatant on the body if you wanted to. But this will this will uh, gurgle like crazy. I could have probably put a little bit more dubbing in the front here to help hold this up a bit better, but it will, because the more this is up, the more it will gurgle, right? So, but this will, uh, they're not the easiest thing in the world to cast, but they, they work very, very well. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. It's a little bit uh, of a different pattern than I normally would tie, but uh, like I said, I want to, want to play around with some top water stuff here. Um, the top water plugs work, so why wouldn't top water gurglers work, right? So I'm going to tie them in a few different colors, pinks, blues, greens, and see what happens. So, alrighty. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Tie lines, everyone.